Hi guys, this video is going to be about another tool that we optometrists can use to find someone's prescription mm. for their glasses, and that's called retinoscopy. So retinoscopy can be performed after autorefraction or instead of autorefraction, or sometimes it's not performed at all. So this might not sound familiar to everybody, but it's a tool that we do have, have to learn and every optometrist should know. So the concepts I talk about, like the light going into the eye and then re reflecting and refracting back out, um, that I talk about in my autorefraction video, uh, hold true for the retinoscopy video. It's the same thing except for now a doctor or an observer is actually looking at it and not just a machine. This is another objective way that we can find something. So the patient just has to be there and look at something. They usually look at a red and green E like this and you're asked to look at it for the duration of the test. The doctor puts lenses in front of your eyes until the right prescription comes up. Like it's not as broad strokes as autorefraction but it's still not as refined as it could be with actual patient interaction, having them say what they like and what they don't like and how much they can read. So this is the midpoint. That's why this is often just skipped over because you can skip right from autorefraction to um, the rest of the subjective refraction. It is very, very difficult to teach, teach without any hands-on anything and it's really difficult to learn. But, um, so this video is not to teach someone how to perform retinoscopy. It's just to show you, if you're asked to look at a red and green E, what the doctor might be looking at to find your prescription. First, the frafter is put in front of the patient like this, and then we grab our retinoscope and we make it into a slit. And when we first shine it in, we see how the line of light that's coming from a retinoscope lines up with the line that's coming back from the patient's eye. So like in this, you can see that it's not lined up perfectly. And so that's the first thing that we do is line that up perfectly. So first we'll be turning the knob in our light source and also we'll be turning the dial that's on the ferropter. Here's a close up. So we're turning this dial and you can see the arrows are moving. Uh, to line up and if you could see the line then I would make sure that the lines lined up. So here you can see that we're getting closer but it's not quite right yet and right here they line up perfectly and also 90 degrees away it should also line up perfectly because that's just how the eyes work. And here you can see that they do line up perfectly but their line, the lines are moving in opposite direction and that's another clue that we can use. Once everything's lined up, we can start putting lenses in front of the eyes to neutralize that motion. And first we start with the sphere lenses, which are here on the side. You add plus lenses if the lines are going in the same direction, and minus lenses if they're going in opposite direction. But you don't have to worry about that. So in this case, we used a plus lens, and first I tried a plus 50 lens to see if it would neutralize it, and it didn't work, so I went up to plus 1 and now it looks like it is neutralized because there's no motion in the streak inside of the eye. But I'll go a little higher just to make sure. So here's 125 and as you can see the streak in the eye is going in the opposite direction so we went too far. So we're gonna go back to 1 and keep it there. Now to neutralize the other meridian 90 degrees away without disturbing all the work we did with the first meridian, we add a new kind of lens, which is called a cylinder lens. And this is the dial right here, which is right in the front of the ferropter. And that's going to change the power in that axis, but not in the other axis. So here I put a minus 150 cylinder at 160 degrees, and you see it's still moving opposite, so I went up to 150 and then it's moving with, so I went too far. So we're going to go to 125 and that should be right. And with 125 it is. 
A good way to check yourself is to check in all meridians when you're done to make sure that at all meridians you have zero motion. Then based on the lenses you had put in front of the eye, you'll know the prescription. Here we have plus 1 minus 125 at axis 160. And of course you have to do the whole process over again on the left eye. If you don't have a phoropter, or if your patient is unable to sit behind a phoropter for very long, you can use what's called a lens rack. And it just has a bunch of different powered lenses in one rack. So you have your patient put on working distance glasses, which you don't have to worry about. Then you just do the same thing, it's just not as precise this way. So I hope this helped to explain a little bit about what we see when we're trying to find your prescription and also this is the second reason why we have to shine lights into your eyes. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it cleared some questions up. Everybody's got a little light under the sun, 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 under the sun.